Okay, so that is... That is a glitch in the matrix. Um, using the work and a 1977 panel appearance by Phil K. as the starting off point, Asher's film explores the notion that humanity as we know it exists within a simulation world not unlike the world of a game. We get an interview from one of the chief philosophers, philosophers of the idea in Nick Bostrom, Bostrom, as well as people who acknowledge that at times they have thought themselves they were in a simulation. We see many of the regular people discussing their moments of feeling a part of a simulation in Avatar form, which is actually, interestingly enough, Hoback also employs in uh, Q Into the Storm with a couple of his interview subjects. Like in Room 237, Asher uses film clips from movies such as Blade Runner and Total Recall and a number of films that help bring the ideas his subjects are discussing to life, as well as computer animated simulations and video game play. The film, of course, derives its title from the film The Matrix. Indeed, the Wachowski Skinner sisters changed the game in how people looked at the world and thought about the ideas Dick fleshed out in his work. One of the strongest aspects of both Hoback and Asher's films is how they illustrate the dark consequences of the theories they explore in their films. For Hoback, we learn about real-world events like a man taking control of who were damned to get Q-inspired files released, the murder of a mod boss by a Q-build individual, and of course the storming of the U.S. Capitol back in January. Asher's is arguably more tragic as he centers in on the story of Joshua Cook, who in 2003 became so obsessed with the Matrix they couldn't see the world as real and one night shot his parents after speaking the final line of the original movie into an empty phone. Cook is currently serving 40 years for the murders after he declined to cop what, what his defense attorney called the Matrix defense and accepted responsibility for what he had done. Cook's recollections of that time in a phone interview with Asher are truly haunting to hear, but in the end, Asher's film ends with some hope for some of his subjects and a realization that empathy for others is something we must grow into in order to move forward and realize that the world we live in is a real one. You can find Q Into the Storm on HBO Max while A Glitch in the Matrix is available to rent on several streaming sites. So, uh, with all of that being said, um, one of the interesting things, uh, last night, yesterday, I was feeling like I need to rewatch a movie, and, um, it was The Adjustment Bureau with Matt Damon and Emily Blunt. If you haven't seen it, it's basically about a, uh, man who's, who basically has his ticket written for the White House one day and he but he keeps having these setbacks and one and after one time of going for running for New York Senate uh, he loses pretty horribly after some uh, compromising photos come out of him and he meets Emily Blunt's character who is hiding out and um that moment is so powerful to him that it inspires him to give this absolutely great speech in his concessions uh, speech, and it automatically sets him up as a front runner in the future. <clears throat> Cut to a few years later, and he and Emily Blunt seem to be continuing to be. Uh, connected and they keep meeting each other by chance and this poses a problem for 
the people in suits and hats that we see are adjusters. They adjust, make little adjustments to the way people think, to the situations people are in, and uh, so that certain things can work out a certain way according to a plan. Um, I had forgotten until I started rewatching the film that it's inspired by a story by Phil K. Dick. And Phil K. Dick was easily um, taking apart anything that we see from a glitch in the Matrix. He's easily one of the film, one of the uh, writers whose work is most impactful when it comes to this idea of virtual reality, this idea of uncertain reality, and whether it's Total Recall, whether it's um, even A Scanner Darkly, the Richard Linklater film, which is inspired by Dick's story, uh, Blade Runner, um, even Paycheck, the John Woo film, and uh, the Adjustment Bureau. And it takes these ideas of fate and responsibility to the way we live, and they challenge our preconceptions of those. At, at their best and it's interesting um it's interesting how each of the stories sort of starts a similar place even though um even though they don't necessarily begin in the same type of <clears throat> uh narrative arc and that was something that really struck me about Justin Bureau I'm probably going to be writing about on Sonic Cinema in the next couple of days because I was so inspired by the viewing yesterday. 